Consecutive integers are funny things. First of all, okay, what is a consecutive integer? Two, three, four, five. Integers are the nice numbers, the whole numbers, their opposites, and zero, and consecutive just means in a row. Because they're consecutive, we can represent them symbolically pretty easily, and so they're often the basis for algebra questions. For example, you could easily imagine a question that asks something like, the sum of four consecutive integers is 14, what is the greatest of those integers? Now in this case, I cheated a little bit because I started with two, three, four, five, but if I needed to set this up and solve it, I could do it by calling the first of these consecutive integers x, and then the next one after that would be x plus one, because it's just going to be the same as what was before, but one bigger. And then the one after that would be x plus two, and the one after that x plus three. These sums of consecutive integers have a bunch of interesting properties. For example, the sum of any four consecutive integers will always be some even number that's not a multiple of four. My second favorite fact about consecutive integers, though, isn't what we get when we add some even number of them together, but instead what we get when we add some odd number of them together. Consider a simple example like five consecutive integers. Pick any five consecutive integers you want, you are guaranteed to get a sum that's a multiple of five. So of course, let's imagine we just stick with one, two, three, four, and five. When we add those together, we get 15. But even if we changed it up slightly, if we added two, three, four, five, and six, instead of getting 15, we would get 20, but 20 is still a multiple of five. And this doesn't only work with five, any odd number of these consecutive integers added together will always be a multiple of that odd number, whatever the number of consecutive integers you added together. Seven consecutive integers always adds up to a multiple of seven. 11 consecutive integers always adds up to a multiple of 11. It's relatively easy to see why this is if we start with something like three consecutive integers. Instead of calling the first one x, and then the next one x plus one, and the next one x plus two, let's call the middle one x this time, and that means that the one right before it, the one one smaller, would be x minus one, and the one right above it, the one one bigger, would be x plus one. You can tell that as we add these together, the minus one and the plus one are going to cancel each other out, and therefore our sum is always going to be three times x, or five times x, seven times x, whatever odd number we started with of those x's. But like I said, that's actually not my favorite fact about consecutive integers. My favorite fact about consecutive integers actually doesn't have anything to do with sums or differences at all. Instead, it has to do with products. If you pick any four consecutive integers and multiply them all together and then add one, you are always guaranteed to be looking at a perfect square. Let's look at an example first of all so we can kind of wrap our head around what's going on here. Again, we'll start simple. One, two, three, four. If we multiply one times two times three times four, we get 24. And again, what we wanna do is add one to that product. 24 plus one is equal to 25 and that's exactly what we were expecting, some perfect square. But again, this is not unique to just one, two, three, four, five. It'll work with any four consecutive integers. Think of something like seven, eight, nine, and 10. Multiplying seven times eight times nine times 10 is going to give you 5,040. If you add one to 5,040, you get 5,041. 5,041 is in fact a perfect square. It just so happens to be 71 squared. Why on earth would this be? Why would it be that every time you multiply four consecutive odd integers and then add one, you get back a perfect square? Well, let's go back to trying to represent these symbolically. We'll call the first integer n, the next one after that will be n plus one, the next one after that will be n plus two, and the fourth one will be n plus three. We're gonna combine these together in a kind of clever way. We're actually gonna pair up the middle two, and then we're gonna pair up the first one and the last one. As we multiply out n plus one times n plus two, we should get the trinomial n squared plus three n plus two. And as we multiply out n times n plus three, we're gonna distribute that n, and we're going to get n squared plus three n. 
Now, you should notice at this stage, oh, those are kind of similar. They're the same expression, n squared plus 3n, just one of them has a plus 2. So let's actually engage in a little bit of clever substitution. Let's name another variable u, and u is going to stand for n squared plus 3n. This means we can actually rewrite our product from before, not as n squared plus 3n plus 2 anymore, but now as u plus 2 times u itself. Again, the u being n squared plus 3n. If we simplify this once more by distributing, we end up with u squared plus 2u. Now, u squared plus 2u is not a perfect square. In fact, for any integer value of u, this can't be a perfect square. Because what we need to turn this into a perfect square is to make it one larger, just like we did to the four consecutive integers before. If we do this, this is now equivalent to the perfect square of u plus 1. And if we undo our substitution from earlier, not only can we see why that product of four consecutive integers plus 1 is always a perfect square, we can also now say exactly what number it's going to be the square of. Recall with our example, 7 times 8 times 9 times 10 plus 1, we said this was equal to 71 squared. Well, if we take n to be that first integer from before, 7, and we plug it into this expression, 7 squared is 49 plus 3 times 7 is 21 plus the one that we know we have to add to that makes this whole thing equal to 71 squared that same 5041 that we got before I love this fact because most of the time that we're dealing with consecutive integers in algebra we try to keep it simple we keep it to just sums or differences but the world of mathematics is larger than that and so we also get these interesting properties when we start to multiply these numbers together drop your favorite property of consecutive integers maybe even consecutive even or consecutive odd integers in the comments down below and otherwise i will see y'all next time